Okay, so I wanted to start today about um, what kind of machines I think you should get if you're getting into like a pretty serious uh, welding, like if you do welding on the side for friends, like the most capabilities that you can get out of the fewest number of machines for the least amount of money. Um, I think I pretty well have that covered except for this guy on the end is kind of just for fun. But with these two welders, I have a 60 amp plasma cutter, an AC DC TIG welder with uh, pulse frequency, or pulse, high frequency pulse, low frequency pulse and all of that. Um, a MIG welder that also TIG welds DC dual voltage. So if I need to take this one somewhere that doesn't have 220, I can do some steel TIG welding, I can do DC stick welding, and I can also do MIG welding all on 110 wall current or 220. Um, this being a plasma cutter as well as my nice TIG machine, I'd kind of like to get those two things separate in case it does break. Um, that's, you know, the majority of my equipment out of commission if this uh, kind of craps out on me. So this is an Everlast 256S. Um, it's, called, it's in their Power Pro series. I've had it for probably around six years now, five or six years. And it has never failed me. I love the machine. Um, I use it for plasma cutting and TIG most. I never really mess with stick on, stick on this machine. Um, this is the Everlast Power MTS 211 SI, which I've done a couple videos on. Um, I actually haven't reviewed the one next to it uh, at any great length because, well, there's no reason. I just need to get around to doing it. But um, this I mainly just use for MIG welding. Um, the TIG function is great. Like, there's nothing wrong with the TIG function on there, but if I'm going to do TIG welding, usually I switch over to this guy because the Argon's usually already hooked up because of that valve system I have back there that goes down to my argon bottle. Now I also have a CO2 bottle down here which is actually a nitrous bottle that I got from work and I just feed the CO2 directly to the back of my MIG welder here and if I need argon to that I just switch the regulators. So super simple and with this this little combination of two welders I mean you get a lot of bang for your buck. This one I think retails for like $1800 and this one's right at a thousand, maybe eleven hundred. So, if you were starting up a shop, they both have a five-year warranty. But their warranty program it takes like about a month after you send off the machine to get the one, the other one back. So if it's your only machine, um, you know, just you don't have to have a backup or anything. But uh, we did have the one at work kind of. It stopped plasma cutting on us randomly. We sent it in, they fixed it for free, you know, no big deal, but um, the warranties are actually, they are valued, so um, that's a very big selling point on these machines. Um, this machine over here I just kind of bought because it was $200, and I made a video about it, and I plan to make videos in the future about what you can do on a $200 welding machine, um, but I'm not there yet. So, I don't really have like a fab shop per se, but like some of my equipment, I have a couple masks here, um, various tools, a bench grinder, um, this tiny anemic vise, I need to actually upgrade that. Um, I got a cheapo drill press on Amazon for about 50 bucks, and it works pretty well, I have it on the lowest speed right now. And then I have this portable bandsaw. Now with the portable bandsaw, I super ghettoly tacked all this stuff together and then put a foot pedal switch on it down there. I don't know if you can see. Oh well. There's a foot pedal switch on it, so as soon as I mash the pedal, it starts cutting. So I will make something a little more professional for that soon, but for now that's plenty to just cut little tiny sheet metal and uh, place it together and stuff. But uh, yeah, so that's my that's my welding shop in my garage. I know it's not fancy or organized or anything, but like I don't actually use it that often, uh, sadly. This is my air compressor. I just hung a wall or a reel on the wall to uh, you know keep the hose up and out of the way. Uh, put a little shut off on it right here to where um, there's no air going to it unless you actually flip this down. 
because I have a little leak. I don't want it running all the time, but it does stay at its full pressure all the time. No leaks, no any, any problems like that. So yeah, that's just a little tour of my weld shop. And uh, if y'all have any questions about like uh, pricing on these machines or anything I want or that I've done with them so far, just let me know. I'll make a, you know, if you ask, I'll make a custom video about it. So please subscribe with YouTube's new policies about having a thousand subscribers uh, to even get monetized. I will be losing my monetization, which isn't that big a deal because I just kind of do this for fun. But it was always nice to uh, see that number slowly, slowly climb. And then, you know, maybe at the end of a year or two, you get a hundred bucks. Just a nice present for putting content out there on the internet. But, uh, yeah, so that's that's my shop. Um, any suggestions I would be open to, like about how to make it flow better or anything like that. Um, so yeah, y'all have a good evening, afternoon, or morning, wherever you are. And uh, keep welding.